Our class in biology has been taking an approach of looking at how things are built up from the atoms, through cells, through organs and organisms, and as I promised, we're going to go all the way up to ecosystems, biomes, and the whole biosphere. And since we're pretty much now at the level where we're past the organisms, we're past all the tissue and organs in the organisms, and we're moving on to ecosystems, this is now the time when what you see around you is what we're studying in this class. So ecosystems are in your backyard. They're on your way to work. They're on, way, on your way to school. And uh, you can see all of the things around you that are interacting. But often you don't know how they're interacting because um, you're not studying them the way that a professional biologist in charge of that kind of stuff is studying them. So you may not even be aware of the different levels that we talk about in biology. For example, uh, ecosystems is a general term that includes the living and non-living parts of an interacting area. Uh, they come in all different sizes, and if you talk about a really large ecosystem, you may actually be talking about a biome. Uh, the entire world with everything in it is called the biosphere, and it is an ecosystem too. Now, we've been talking about organisms and smaller things, and when a human destroys an organism like a plant or an animal, uh, many others are there to take its place. So the impact is pretty low. But if we kill an entire species, that's called making it go extinct, there's really no going back um, because there's nothing to replace those animals. There's, there's no way, except for like we were talking about with Jurassic Park, to bring back from the dead an extinct species. Uh, now, when we disrupt an ecosystem, it is also difficult to go back because that ecosystem is tied to a specific location on the planet Earth. And if you could imagine the globe and just deleting one little part of that globe, there's really no, there's no way to put it back. Uh, for example, you can try uh, when Canadian geese were completely wiped out in certain regions due to overhunting, uh, people decided, let's try to put the geese back. We have geese other places. We haven't made the entire species go extinct. So let's put them back in those little locations that have been destroyed. The problem there is that Canadian geese need to learn from their parents how to migrate. So the geese went back, but they didn't know how to migrate uh, for the south and to the south in the winter and come back to the north. And so they just stayed there, and it changed the whole ecosystem because they were there all year round. So disrupting ecosystems is a major reason why we have trouble with different species. That's why many species have gone extinct. Uh, because of taking away their, their uh, non-living and living components to their ecosystem. We would like to preserve all of the amazing forms of life, which is a, a great goal because there's so many interesting things here on our planet. So we need to make sure that we don't disrupt ecosystems. And learning about biology is also learning the responsibility that comes along with knowing what's going on in the world around us. Now, an activity for yourself, just to kind of put this all in perspective, is to think about the proverbial golden goose. The golden goose was said to have been able to lay golden eggs for whoever owned this golden goose. Would you rather have the eggs that she laid or the goose itself? Well, that's always the easy choice. You'd rather have the golden goose because then from then on, you can always have those wonderful golden eggs. And that's a fitting picture for the best priorities in conservation. We don't know always the best way to take care of our environment. But if we think about what it is that's producing the good things, the golden eggs, for each ecosystem, we can really focus in on what's important. A story that illustrates uh, some of the dangers of trying to protect ecosystems, protect uh, species, is an example of a um, toad tunnel in Davis, California. Uh, there was going to be a six-lane highway built uh, through Davis, California, and the citizens um, were concerned about the path of toads that were going from one place to their habitat, back and forth. Um, so at the cost of 
$14,000, the city of Davis put in a tunnel underneath the six-lane highway so that the toads could migrate uh, through those, the, that tunnel. Unfortunately, the, the tunnels were never used by toads. Uh, they continued to hop on the road and get squished. Um, and um, ideas were floated around as to how to improve this, maybe put some lighting in there uh, so that the toads wouldn't be afraid or, or whatnot. And it turns out that that made a problem worse. Some of the toads were actually cooked by the heat of the lamps. Um, and it was, it was just overall not successful. It's just a tiny example, but it illustrates how our ideas of protection don't always work. And in fact, we need to know a lot more than we know right now about biology so that we can learn how to protect the environment around us and the ecosystems that animals and plants have to use. Now, if you're going a little bit deeper, you should now read the branch called How Do Climate Ecosystems and Human Activities Affect Each Other. There's several leafs under that that talk about recent changes, uh, climate change, global warming, and, uh, and discuss our responsibility um, in some of these areas.